During the Vietnam War, there was a heated argument over the effectiveness of our missiles. Tests with the F-106 fighter showed that the AIM-4G infrared missile was very effective with a probability of kill about 95%. When they put it on the F-4D fighter and used it in Vietnam, though, it had very poor results. Our most famous fighter pilot and wing commander, Colonel Robin Olds, called them damned useless things and had them removed from his aircraft. At the Pentagon in Washington, D.C., the generals were worried. Were the test results with the F-106 valid? Tests with the F-106 had always been under very controlled conditions. Technical representatives from the company would check over the missiles and the aircraft and be sure everything was right before they were fired, and they are always fired against special test targets with flares to make better IR signatures. What would happen against realistic targets with aircraft and missiles that had not been given any special preparation? They sent a surprise order to the 94th Fighter Squadron at Selfridge Air Force Base, Michigan. Take two F-106s that are actually on alert, download all the missiles except the two infrared missiles, and fly them down to Tyndall Air Force Base for a special test. No maintenance other than normal servicing of fuel, oil, and oxygen was permitted. The squadron commander could pick any two pilots he wished to fly the mission. He picked me to lead the mission, and Captain Arnie Voigt, who had an excellent reputation with weapon systems, as my wingman. We took two F-106s directly off alert and flew them down to Tyndall Air Force Base for our safety briefing. Our primary target would be a MACE cruise missile. The MACE was actively deployed with the Air Force and could carry a nuclear weapon. The rules of the test were simple. There was no maintenance on our aircraft or missiles, but we could use any method we wished to shoot down the mace. If the first fighter failed to shoot down the mace, his wingman would move in to finish the job. If the first fighter shot down the mace, a standard Fire B drone would be launched as a target for the second F-106. After the briefing, Captain Arnie Voigt came to me and said that because I had got the bow mark a few months before, he really, really wanted to get the first shot at the mace. So I said he would lead the flight and I would be his wingman. We took off from Tyndall and the mace was launched from Eglin. As it turned into the gunnery range, Arnie rolled into attack and I flew his wing. He came in behind it and launched his two infrared missiles. The missiles were supposed to ripple fire a few milliseconds apart, but instead they launched simultaneously. They left his plane together and raced toward the mace. You could have drawn a ruler across the nose of the two as they stayed right with each other as they came toward the mace. Then they both tried to get into the mace's tailpipe at the same instant. They hit each other. The explosion blew the mace's tail into the air and it tumbled toward the Gulf of Mexico. Then an amazing thing happened. The mace's autopilot recovered it from the unusual position and it straightened out and continued flying. I moved in to take my shot at it, but then I noticed the mace was slowing down. Its engine had flamed out. I did not fire. The mace slowed down until it couldn't fly anymore, then it lost control and tumbled into the Gulf of Mexico in a beautiful white splash on the blue water. My target, the smaller Fire B drone, was then launched and I moved in for the kill. I used my infrared sight and selected my infrared missiles and launched them. The missiles left with a whoosh and hit the fire bee with a tremendous explosion. Two F-106s had taken off and shot down two targets with no maintenance and no special preparation. 
we had proven the reliability of the system. The F-106 had a computer to fire its missiles. The F-4 did not. That confirms to me that the F-106 was the best fighter of its day.